Hey guys, so I'm finally able to sit down and do a video for you. I'm back from Italy, my birthday is over, my parents have gone home, and I finally have some time to sit down and film. As most of you guys know, I was in Italy for about a month and then came home a couple days later, it was my birthday, and then the day after my birthday, my parents decided to come and visit for about two weeks. They just went home this morning back to Connecticut, so I finally have some quiet time to sit down and film, and I wanted to do a video that's been really highly requested from you guys, and that is my Louis Vuitton Italy haul. So I'm gonna show you all of the bags that I purchased while I was in Italy, and actually all of the bags I bought in one kind of little shopping trip when we were in Florence because we actually don't shop that much when we travel. Zach really packs a full schedule and a lot of places we only have a couple days because even though we go for about three and a half weeks, we're trying to go to as many places as we can in the country that we go to. So Florence, we had a little bit of extra time. I think we were there for about five days and I had about a half a day or a couple hours to actually shop and I definitely took advantage of that. Normally we like to do all of the tourist stuff or historical things that we're supposed to do, but because it was Italy, I did wanna make sure that I picked something up. When we were in London before, I didn't get to do any shopping at all, which London is huge for shopping. And in Greece, I didn't really do any shopping, but Greece is a little bit different with that anyway. But for Italy, I wanted to make sure that I was able to take advantage of the better prices and also the fact that the Euro is closer to the dollar right now, probably the closest I've seen it in a really long time. So I definitely wanted to make sure that I at least picked something up from my like wish list of things that I've been kind of backburnering for a while. So I'm going to go ahead and get right into it. And the first couple bags are probably a little bit boring for you guys just because I feel like they're such staples in everyone else's collections except for mine. I've wanted to get these bags for a while but just never really kind of pulled the trigger on it. So this is the Alma PM in the monogram print, which I actually really like Louis Vuitton monogram. I know some people think it's too flashy or it's too much or it's tacky. I really like it because it reminds me so much of their luggage pieces. Louis Vuitton travel is like everything for me. I think it's so... I just love the history. I love the look of it. And even though monogram was not their original design for what they used. It's kind of what everyone thinks of, I think, when you think of the Louis Vuitton trunks and all of the pieces, like the hat boxes and stuff. I just, it's so just old-fashioned and glamorous to me. So I really like monogram. Again, I know some people don't. I personally do. I think most of my pieces are monogram or like a special edition of monogram. So I just really like it. Um, as you can see, the leather at the bottom has gotten a little bit of color. It's not as bright white as it normally is when you first get it, and that's because I did use it while I was in Italy. Um, I actually like my pieces to get a little bit more of that very even honey patina. I don't like super, super dark or kind of like when just the handles get really dark, but typically I don't really have that problem. I actually have very dry hands, so a lot of the oils from my skin don't really transfer onto here too much, so I usually end up with a very even patina. If you've ever seen some of my older pieces, they're almost perfectly even because it's just ages with the you know, the air and the sun and things like that, but very little of it from my actual hands. So I can't wait till this gets a little bit darker. When I was first collecting Louis Vuitton, I was younger. I loved it when it was white and I used to be so like worried about it getting dark and getting gross or whatever, but now I actually kind of like it when it picks up a little bit of color. So I'm excited to see it change the more I use it. I really, really like this bag. I think it's really easy to use uh, because the top is so open. It's very easy to access all of your items in here, but you still kind of have that traditional top handle look. If you like the look of a Speedy, but you're looking for something with a little bit more structure, this might be a good option for you. It's a very classic style, and if you ever read the backstory of what this bag was created for and things like that, I think you will fall in love with it as well. But other than that, I really like some of the changes that they've made to it, particularly the feet at the bottom. I'm not really picky about bags having feet, but because this has the untreated leather at the bottom, I think the feet are a really nice addition just because if you look at some of the older versions of this bag, a lot of times it's very easy to pick up stains and whatnot just because it's laying flat on here all the time. So I think that that's nice. I actually purchased the same bag for my mom 
a couple years ago, but with the Damier print. The next bag, I have to give a shout out to Jerusha from Jerusha Couture TV because she really gave me the extra push that I needed to try on this bag. So I've always loved the Speedy bag. And when they had introduced the Bandolier style, I had wanted to get one, but ended up getting the Damier Speedy 30 in the Bandolier and ended up selling it because I never used it. It was way too big. The 25 is such a great size for the Bandolier. And again, it was something that was in the back of my mind, but I would always go for more exciting bags. I think sometimes when you know a bag is a staple or a classic for uh, that line, you always kind of think, well, I can just get it another time or I'll get it another time. But the problem with that is sometimes the price goes up and then you're like, oh, I should have bought it a couple years ago. So that's kind of what happened with me with this bag. But again, you know, with the price in Europe, I was kind of like, oh, I might as well. And honestly, I might not have gotten it. I might have pushed it off yet again if Jerusha didn't love it so much. She does multiple videos about how much she loves this bag. She also got hers in Italy, but she got hers in Rome. And I've talked to her via direct message before and she was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you never tried it on. It's such a great bag, you have to try it. So when I was there, I had it kind of on my list of possible things to get and I tried it on and it just was, I don't know, perfect. So again, I really am a fan of the Speedy. It was one of my first Louis Vuitton bags, not my very first, but probably my first big Louis Vuitton bag was the regular Monogram Speedy 30. That was, I think 2006 is when I, I bought that. And like I said, it wasn't my first one. I had had some smaller pieces, but it was my first big Louis Vuitton bag. After that, I really kind of went speedy crazy just because it's so easy to use and they weren't really as expensive at the time. So I, have every Speedy I've ever purchased except for the one. I got rid of the Speedy 30 bandolier in the Damier print like I told you, but I have the 25 in Damier, Damier Azor, the 30 in Monogram, and also the Jungle print one, which you guys have seen in a previous haul, and then I have the Watercolor Speedy, which is 35. So now I have every print of the 25 for the canvas bags, and honestly I'm really happy that I waited and got the bandolier one because I really like this look and I think it'll be nice as this softens up and it changes color and just the functionality of the strap, you wouldn't think it's that big of a deal, but it really does make a huge difference. I don't have the extender on my strap. I have it on the longest um, hole for just the regular, just a regular strap, which looks like this. And I like it like this. To me, on my frame, it looks really weird as a crossbody. I think it's too big, um, but I like it as a shoulder bag. This hits me, um, on the hip, a little bit lower than my hips. So for me, this is good enough, but it does also come with a center extension. So if you wanted to wear it crossbody, you could. Like I said, I don't like it on me as a crossbody, but um, I know a lot of people probably that would be a plus. Also, another reason I don't like the extension is because I carry this as a top handle bag quite often, and I don't like too much of the strap hanging down. I just think it doesn't look quite as good. But I absolutely love this bag. It's the most practical of all the speedies that I have. The 25 is a great size. I think the 30 can be very overwhelming on a lot of body types. Even though it's kind of a cool look, it's just, I don't know, if you don't carry a ton of stuff, it's a little bit pointless. For me, if you've ever seen any of my what's in my bag videos, I carry a wallet, my keys, my phone, some lip products, and maybe a camera. That's really it. I don't carry a bunch of other things. So for me, it's kind of silly to have like a huge sack with like nothing in it. So the 25 is a great size and it will still hold a lot if you need it to. Like I can put a sweatshirt in here. It's kind of crazy. So I really love this and I'm so happy with that purchase. I know it's kind of boring for you guys because I'm sure that everybody has this bag, but I was excited to add it to my collection. And then the last bag I have to show you before I get into a couple accessories is this one, which I've been getting a lot of questions about on Instagram. Apparently a lot of people have not seen this bag. It is relatively on the newer side. I believe it was released while I was in Italy. So this is the City Steamer PM. It also comes in a mini size, an MM size, and probably a GM size. I don't really remember. I haven't seen it. And on the website, I also saw um, an east-west version of it as well. So this is the PM. I think that this is such a great size. This is a shape that I really tend to gravitate towards. You guys know I like the kind of boxier top handle bags. So when I saw this, of course, I really liked it. This is probably my favorite Louis Vuitton bag that I own or have ever owned. Um, I think that the leather is so nice. It is a full leather bag, so it has a little bit of a weight to it, but it's not 
you know, unbearable. If you're a top handle purse wearer, this is going to be no big deal for you. It's got a lot of really nice um, just little extra features that I think make this bag special for Louis Vuitton. It is a full leather bag, so it doesn't have the um, micro suede lining or anything like that in it, which I feel like they do with a lot of their leather bags to keep the cost down and also to keep the weight down. Uh, this one actually is full leather and the leather is beautiful. I don't normally buy a ton of full leather bags, uh, Chanel, but not Louis Vuitton. I never really go for their leather pieces, but this one I absolutely loved. I think it is simple enough, but not boring. So I don't know. I really like it. I like these style of bags, and like I said, the quality is just so nice. The, the leather on the inside is so soft and supple and just... I don't know. I really, really like this bag so much. I, this is like my favorite bag right now. Um, I, I'm going a little handbag crazy. This is a tangent, so I'm just going to go there and I'll come back. But I've been going a little bit handbag crazy where my boyfriend actually was like, what is going on right now? You're, it's like too much. So uh, I've actually purchased six handbags in less than 30 days. So you guys will see the other ones when they come in, but um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I went through a phase where I was kind of bored of everything and I wasn't really liking anything. And then all of a sudden everything just hit me like a ton of bricks and I'm going like a little bit crazy right now. But I'm really happy with all of my purchases, so, you know, there's that. So anyway, I think that this bag is so great, and if you can get it in Europe, you are going to save a ton of money on it. Um, I just, I don't know, I can't say enough about it. I'll show you, I guess, a little bit more of the features and just stop saying that I love it. But So this is what it looks like. It's got two top handles, and inside is basically just a box. It opens up like this. It actually holds a decent amount, and because I don't carry too too much it's more than enough space for me if you can see in here it does close but it's I mean it's not really closing anything so I never close that it's got one large slip pocket back here which sometimes I do keep something in like if I have like a card case or something I'll put it in there or my phone so that's what it looks like. It also does have a big zip pocket back here, which is the whole length of the bag. And I don't really keep anything in here, but if I was traveling or going into the city or something like that, I would probably keep my wallet or something. I just have the keys to the lock in here right now. And the lock in the front, it is a different lock. It's not the standard Louis Vuitton lock that comes with the speedies and whatnot. This one is a special one. So it has a big LV in the center with a circle around it, which is the same as the little hot stamp in the back. And then on the other side is just your basic Louis Vuitton Paris. That, that part is the same as the speedy lock. But this part does unlock and you can twist this little toggle right here and this pocket does open. I'm not going to do it right now just because I don't... Okay, I'll do it for you guys. I'll do it. I don't normally like to do it because it's kind of a pain. I usually just... I don't keep anything in there, but for you guys, I will do it. So, here it is, opened. And that's what it looks like inside. I've actually never opened this pocket, so there's something for you. And if you didn't want the lock on there, you could leave it off just because I know some people will probably be worried about it, like scratching this, but honestly, I figure the bag is meant to wear how it's supposed to wear. I'm not really that concerned with it. I think it looks too plain without it on there. It just looks like it needs the lock. So I would suggest just leaving it on. I don't keep anything in there just because it's a pain, but I really like the look of it. And like I said, this is more than enough space for me. They also did a little luggage tag, which I think is really cute. It's got the LV on it. And if you wanted to put something back there, I'm sure you could, but I mean, it's your purse. I don't know why you would. Um, and then the other thing that you guys might like is that it comes with a shoulder strap, which I don't use, but it doesn't look bad on this bag. And I know that that'll probably be a big plus for a lot of you that do like to do um, the shoulder. This is just a great bag. They did such a good job with this. I hope that this bag becomes popular and people really like it because I just think it's one of the best ones that they've ever made. I really have been enjoying it and the handles are very sturdy as well. Like I don't feel them getting soft or anything. I haven't had it obviously for that long, but I've used it quite a bit and the way it's attached onto the bag, it seems very sturdy as well. So I absolutely love this. And I will leave more information about all of the bags in the info box below. So this is just a little something, but when I was there, I did take a look at these little scarves just because 
I've seen a lot of people with their Alma and their Pochette Matisse, which I also have, and they wrap the handle with one of these little scarves or um, a twilly, and I really like the look. I don't know if I'll ever go for it, but this one was so pretty that I didn't want to pass it up. It is the Louis Vuitton luggage, and it's got like a pink background. It's got the little LVs on it, which you guys, I've already said, I love Louis Vuitton travel pieces. Their luggage is just my favorite thing ever, so I really liked this, and it's a very pretty um, pale pink with the gray, and I just think it was really nice. So that's everything I wanted to show you guys in this haul. The only other thing that I wanted to maybe touch on really briefly was the new packaging. If you guys have not seen it, it is amazing for Louis Vuitton. I think it's so pretty. It reminds me a little bit of like an old like an older Louis Vuitton. Um, I love the bow. Obviously I like this color. I did not try to match my nails to it. It just happened to be so. Um, but I really, really like this. And just, I think it's so much fresher looking and a little bit more luxe looking than the older brown ones that they had, which I was never really crazy over. They changed their dust bags and stuff too. So this is the lock and key from my Speedy Bandolier. It's got the blue and it's not quite as yellow as it was. So just kind of wanted to point those things out. Not that it's really super important. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. My nail color, I don't remember what it is off the top of my head. It's one of the Sally Hansen ones, but I have it on Instagram. And then on my lips, because I know people will ask, this is one of the new Tarte Tartus lip paints. These are the quick dry ones. This is the color I have on right now, and it's in the color Delish. This is my first time wearing it, so hopefully it looks good on camera, but so far I like it. And that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and it wasn't too rambly. You guys know how I am when I first get back filming. I'm kind of like out of rhythm with it. I plan on doing a bunch more videos. I want to actually do a separate video on the other things that I purchased in Italy that were not handbags, because I did get some other things that were more sentimental and not, you know, not all luxury stuff. Some of it is, but some of it isn't. Um, so I kind of want to show you guys those too and tell you the backstory and different places that I got it. Um, but I'm going to have to do that in a different video because I can tell this one is probably already going to be long. And I want you to do this one first because I know I have a lot of people that follow me on here that really love the luxury handbag stuff. So hopefully you guys found this video enjoyable and entertaining. Let me know in the comment section below which is your favorite out of the three bags that I purchased while I was in Italy. Hopefully I will talk to you guys very soon. Have a great weekend and I'll talk to you later. Bye.